guys, welcome to Vlogmas day seven, six, seven, must be seven. Um, I, as you can see, I'm currently on my way to the tube to go back up to Edinburgh, gonna go to King's Cross. I don't know if I said yesterday, but my friend Emily, who's doing the same course as me, who's my roommate, I actually sent her my email and she's already printed off my essay, so I think she might probably hand that in for me anyway with hers just in case I don't arrive in time. I mean, I should arrive in time. Apparently, the East Coast service is not as badly affected as the West Coast because the weather's crazy up there. But you never know. So that's all sorted, really. Shouldn't have any late hand-ins. So, I'm back in Edinburgh again. My train did end up being about half an hour delayed, so Emily very kindly handed my essay in for me um, with hers. So, that's all done. Now, I'm gonna upload my main channel video which I decided not to upload at the farm because it was just going to be too much of a faff. So hopefully you will have seen my Urban Outfitters lookbook by now. And I'm also going to upload today's vlog message which I edited on the train. Today my plan for revision is to go through all the lecture slides and lecture handouts for my poetry exam. I just walked up all the stairs so <laughs> I'm still a bit out of breath. My poetry exam um, is split into two parts. So the first section is kind of unseen poetry, which is a classic English literature thing. Um, so there's not much revision I can do for it. Hopefully that bit shouldn't be too bad. You know, you just look at it and analyse it and just hope for the best, really. Um, I think we get quite a lot of choice on the poems as well, which is good. Second part of the exam are like general essay questions on a kind of topic within poetry or a type of poetry and the kind of theoretical problems that might surround that. I've looked at some past papers and it's usually just one of the lectures basically so there's a question on sonnets, there's a question on lyric poetry, there's a question on vernacular poetry, poetry in politics or poetry in gender. So over the next couple of days I think I'm going to choose one of those topics, do that in depth um, and just do some critical reading around that and obviously learn a few poems off by heart and I think that's all I can really do because we've not got loads of time to do it all really but like I said it's, it's quite hard to revise for these kind of exams you kind of just have to rely on your <laughs> essay writing skills um, I tell you what, let's go and open all my advent calendar stuff I left them up here, they're quite bulky calendars and I didn't want them to get crushed or anything Obviously, in an ideal world, taking down all my Christmas presents and the um, all of my stuff, basically, on Thursday. But I did not. So, right, let's do it. So, I can't remember, the last one I did was third, was it? So, I've got fourth, fifth, and sixth, sixth and seventh. Mm -mm, fourth, fifth. Six. Ooh, this one's fancy. Ooh. And seven. Where is number seven? There it is. So let me open them all up. So there they all are, and they've got the little kind of after eight clock on a couple of them. So I'm gonna eat these. Right, I think this one's fourth. Ooh, I like the colour of this one. Okay, it says, everyone's a star and deserves the right to twinkle. And that's a Marilyn Monroe quote, apparently. I like the colour of that one a lot. You guys know I love my neutrals. Ooh, a woman is helpless only when her nail polish is drying. And this looks like a little top coat or something, or a treatment, it says. Um, nail illuminator. 
This is so exciting. So many nail polishes. Um, seven. This one says, no one is too old for fairy tales. And it's pretty turquoisey color. Is it turquoisey or just kind of like a blue? It's Ahoy Sailor. Oh, I didn't tell you the name of the pink one. That one's Cutie Pie. I did the seventh before I did the sixth. Oh, a sparkly one. This would be nice on top of other nail polishes to do like a snowy, Christmassy look. And this one is Snow Glow. I need to start doing my nails more often so that I can wear more of these. Okay, guys, time to get uploading and stuff, and I will see you in a bit. Okay, guys, my mum and I have been. A little bit silly because I was just looking at my booking for um, the car that I was going to rent on Thursday and it says right under all the cars that you have to be 23 and neither of us saw it. Should have thought about it really because you just think you can rent them can't you because I've been driving for like three years. Um, so that was a little bit silly of us. I mean I would ideally obviously take myself on the train but I think I've got too many presents. Um, makes it went a bit crazy. Hi guys, so I figured I promised you that I would show you all of the stuff in the package that YSL sent me, so I'm going to do that now for you guys. First thing I've picked up is not from YSL, this is Urban Decay's Subversion Thicker Longer Stronger Lash Primer. And I actually had a L'Oreal double ended um, mascara. Don't know if you guys remember me using it, which I loved, which had like a lash primer in it. And I think they're kind of underrated actually. It made my lashes look so thick and beautiful. I got a classic Touche Eclat. I've used this kind of on and off over the years. Um, obviously it's supposed to be a lovely little highlight. Um, and it's quite nice to put over makeup as well um, when you're out and about, just to like brighten your makeup up. Um, okay, I got a couple of Rouge Volupt lipstick. One's La Rouge Volupt, is it Volupt or Volupt? I don't know. Shine and one's not. So this is the non-shiny one. I think they're both quite moisturising though. And you guys know I like my mattes. I think I might pass these ones on to um, people who will appreciate them more. Um, and that's the shine one. It's a gorgeous colour, but as you guys know, I just don't wear shine on my lips but they are beautiful i got this which i used the other day which is the the couture eye primer and i used to use max painterly paint pot all the time and this is very similar it's kind of like this one's super pale yeah one fair so i think they do them in different colors i don't know what the color range is like um i'll have a look but yeah i uh I used to use it every day kind of under my eyeliner, so I think this is probably something I'll get quite a lot of use out of. They sent me this which looks amazing, but I don't really, I'm like a bit scared of it. If you guys can see, it's just so sparkly and it's actually a primer, Touche Eclat Blur Primer. If any of you guys have used this, then let me know what it's like. Um, I think I'll try it out in the coming days because my skin's been looking all sorts of dry and gross um with all the kind of i don't know what it is weather changes and you know just not having not drinking enough water probably all that kind of stuff i got two of the baby doll kiss and blushes which i'm actually really excited about i think these are quite a cool concept um and i got them in number three and number ten um what is the difference between these two this one's kind of a more it's got more of a red tinge to it and it's a little bit darker and this one's more kind of a true pink I think is what I'd say, cool pink, and like a, yeah, ready, warm toned -y pink. And so yeah, you can use them on your lips and cheeks. It's like a doe for applicator like that. I got one of these naked um, flushed palettes, which is very exciting. I, I remember seeing loads of these um, on people's um, Instagrams and stuff. I haven't even opened this yet. Look at that. It is gorgeous. Well, I like the colour of that bronzer. It's like, um, it's quite glowy, but not too sparkly. I'm really liking cheek products at the moment. Um, definitely be getting into my bronzers and blushes and stuff. Um, I got a Kajal, Kajal, Kajal eyeliner. 
Um, and I have not used one of these since, was it Sleek that had um, a Kajar eyeliner? I can't remember who it was. Um, but I might probably, I might try that out for kind of some smoky eye looks. But my main problem with um, these kind of eyeliners is that they do not stay in place. They kind of just immediately move around, but I'll give it a go anyway. So I also got this really nice, it's called a matte finish and blur without additional coverage powder. So I see that's just a powder you put on top of your makeup. It looks quite white. I do like a good matte finish every now and then, especially when I'm filming, because I always just shine. As you can see right now, I am reflecting light. Um, and the next product is quite an interesting one. I tried it out the other day. It's the Touche Club Blur Perfector. So I think it's kind of like this, but in like compact form. And it, the packaging is gorgeous, first of all. And then inside, it's like this pink, creamy... I don't even know how to describe it. It is like a primer that you would put on top of your makeup. Um, and it just blurs pores. Um, and perfects the skin basically and I think you can wear this alone as well to um, just if you're not going to put any foundation or anything on just to kind of make your skin look a little bit more perfected I've got a naked skin beauty balm I have not used a BB cream in such a long time um, this is an oil it says oil free DNA repair optical blurring and yes I love a good BB cream. I actually, I kind of feel like I need to go back to the BB cream a little bit. I've got caught up in the foundation world and I've forgotten my roots and I feel like I need to get back into the BB cream world. Next, I got a lip gloss and I will probably be donating this to some lucky soul. But the packaging is gorgeous and, oh, it's like a pinky color. Um, Now we've got a lot of lip products very beautiful lip products um, I've also got another lip gloss um, which I think is very similar it's the Rouge Pure Couture in number 106 I would swatch all these for you guys but I'm actually just scared of swatching it maybe I'll swatch this one for you just like a pinky colour I don't want to swatch because they're all so beautiful right I have a Rouge Pure Couture in number 9 um, first of all, let's take a moment to appreciate the packaging of all these lipsticks. It is gorgeous. This one really reminds me of Whirl. It's kind of like a pinky brown colour, a classic 90s colour. Um, and something I'm sure I will get a lot of wear out of. Um, let's do the non-mattes first. So we've got another one in number 10. This is a gorgeous nude colour. Oh, it's like a pinky colour actually really really nice then we have another one in number 39 look at that color you guys oh that is a classic some means just circa 2012 color oh my goodness it's like a grapey kind of color right now moving on to the mats which i was obviously very excited about, hang on, now my hand is covered in swatches, so let me go sort that out. So we have um, number 201, which is this amazing red color. As I suspected, it's kind of like an orangey brick red. Um, these lipsticks are really interesting as well, because you guys know I wore one of them the other day, or one of the reds, not this one, the other red that I've got and um, it does dry matte, it looks completely matte, but on the lips it's really quite moisturizing. It's a little bit oily, so it does feel like it's slipping, um, but it's really interesting texture. I've never come across a matte lipstick that actually simultaneously moisturizes, and this will dry matte in a minute, I'm sure. And then they just like, but they kind of remain on top of the lips as opposed to sinking into them. It's very strange, but very cool. Um, and a great alternative for you guys who really want to wear matte lipsticks, but just hate the drying feeling. I'm personally used to it and it doesn't really bother me too much. Um, right, now we've got 208, which is a hot pink. Reminds me of, um, is it Candy? What's the hot pink from MAC that I have? Oh, I can't remember. That is an amazing colour. That will look amazing in summer. Um, 
not so much right now because it will make me look very yellowy green which is my winter color then we have number 206 which is oh this gorgeous brownie red that really reminds me of kind of media from mac something like ready purple a nice dark color and finally 203 this must have been the one that i wore the other day um so you can compare it yeah so as i suspected this one's more of like a true red and this one's more orangey so there we go those are probably some of my fave products but i'm really intrigued to try out the baby doll kiss and blush and the kind of touche clap primer things so yes once again just a massive thank you to ysl for sending me these it was such a treat to open it all up and um it really did feel like christmas so i'm very very grateful so i've had a bit of food guys gonna continue with my work now you're leaving such lovely comments on my lookbook so thank you guys so much just getting on with work really i think i'm gonna have a chilled evening i'm not gonna work too late i'm gonna get a good night's sleep so i finished all my powerpoints and all my kind of lecture notes and everything um where's the remote so i'm now just watching made in chelsea before i go to sleep um just for a little bit of brain downtime um and i've also identified a list of poets that i want to just have a little look at um i went through the past papers and just kind of noted down all the poets that they've used before um poets that they've used in the lectures so that I can just get an idea of when the poets were writing and what they were writing about mostly just so I can get like an idea of the history of poetry which I think might be useful for the unseen obviously if you can kind of um, I think they've rem started removing the dates from the unseen poetry so I might have to identify what kind of era it's from so um, although I can like I could probably attempt that at the moment I think my memory needs a little bit of a refresh hi guys so it's time for me to go to bed now um i hope you enjoyed today's vlog and another day of studying tomorrow but it's the second to last day so hooray bye